All right, I have had a lot of requests for this, and I was thinking about doing this in a few parts, but after I was going through my materials and stuff like that, I realized I could probably just cram all this into one super episode. Now, this distribution has never really had any coverage on my show, and this happens to be the oldest Linux distribution that's out there that is still being maintained. Of course, I'm speaking about Slackware, and in the first part of this video, I am going to install uh, the full Monty, and then in the second part of the episode, I'm going to give you a rundown of what you get. And all of that begins right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's begin. Now, for starters, the beginning part is going to involve using the command line. I realize this is going to be a little bit boring and that sort of thing, and I'm going to go really fast. And yes, I've ditched the wig and the makeup, so don't expect any funny behavior while that's going on. Uh, but in the event that uh, you get lost, feel free to pause the video. Make sure you're watching this in high def as well so that you can see everything that's going on. I also pre-recorded this to make this uh, go a little bit smoother for me uh, in presenting this first part of the series to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. At the boot prompt, uh, just go ahead and press enter, and then uh, this will start loading everything up for you. And once everything has finished booting, press Enter to select US as the default key map, or one if you're going to use a different key map. You're going to log in as root, okay, and then we're going to run fdisk L. This will show that I have a 20 gig hard drive installed on here uh, with nothing on there. So I'm going to run fdisk slash dev slash sda. And then pressing M will give you a menu of the different things that you can do with this partitioner. I'm going to press N and then P for a new partition. Now my hard drive is 20 gigs. I'm going to select the first partition. And so I'm going to press Enter. And then I'm going to put in 18G, plus 18G. And then the rest will be allocated over to swap. Pressing Enter. Then I'm going to press A to make that first 18 gig partition bootable. Once that's done, I'm going to press N for new partition, and then a primary, press 2, and then enter, and enter again, that's going to assign the rest of it, and then I'm going to press T, T, then 2, and then hex code 82 assigns Linux swap. Pressing W will write your changes, and then you can check by pressing, typing in fdisk L, and you'll see I have two partitions, one for boot with 18 gigs for Linux, and then the other Linux swap. Then we're going to type in setup. Okay, the first thing you're going to do after setup runs is you're going to select to add swap. It will detect your swap partition. Press OK, and then press no. You do not want it to uh, scan disk for errors. We're going to press OK on the confirmation dialog, and then dev sda1, we're going to select that for installing Linux onto. We are going to format it with no block checking. And then we are going to select ext4. Okay, once that's done formatting, it will give you a confirmation showing what you have and what's going on the F step. Then we are going to install Slackware from CD or slash DVD and press OK. I'm going to select to auto scan for it. And I also use the DVD uh, for this, but they do have CDs available. Okay, I'm going to go with the default configuration, everything that is selected here. I figured I'd page through it just to see what they are and then pressing enter or for OK. Okay, and then uh, once the next window comes up, we're going to tell it to install full. We want the full Monty. We want everything on here. And that's going to be become beneficial, as I'll explain later. Now, these screens here are progressing very fast. This install took me about an hour in VirtualBox. However, it may not take as long if you were to do this on actual hardware. Okay, next it's going to ask you if you want to make a USB boot stick. We're going to skip that. We really don't want to do that, really. 
Okay, and then after that is done, we are going to select Simple to install Lilo automatically. This does not use Grub, this uses Linux Loader. We're going to select Standard and then press OK. And then we're not going to just going to do OK again because we don't want to really pass anything. We're going to we're not going to use the UTF-8 text console. This is the safe method. We're going to install to the master boot record. Okay, and then once that finishes loading, we're going to select the Microsoft PS2 IntelliMouse, but you can scroll through and choose any option that you want. Okay, and then we are going to press yes for the GPM configuration. And then do you want to configure your network? Of course you do. We're going to enter in the host name. In this case, I'm going to name it VBox. Okay, but we don't need to have a domain name, so pressing space and enter will be fine. And then we're going to select Network Manager. That way we have that little icon on our taskbar. And so we're going to press yes to confirm. Okay, and now we're going to confirm our startup services. You can go through and press space on any one of those. I want with a default. We are not going to do any Anything with any fonts in this and we're going to select the hardware clock to UTC okay and then we're going to select the default window manager I paged through all of them to see what we were getting KDE XFC flux box black box window maker uh, FEWM2 or TWM XFCE was fine enough for me okay and then we're going to go ahead and create a root password of course I wrote something really short so it gives me a, an error but we're going to use it anyway Okay, and then once that has done, we're going to press enter to continue. All right, and then system setup is complete. All we have to do is close everything out, and then we can reboot the computer. And then once the computer reboots, we will be greeted by this lovely Linux loader that says Slackware on it. There it is. Press enter to start. And once all of that has loaded, then we're going to need to log in again as root. Don't forget your password. All right, now we're going to add user Spatry. Okay, and just press enter and then enter for the initial group. We really don't need to assign anything to those. Uh, the initial group is users, so we're going to press enter, but then press the up arrow and it'll give you more options to add for additional uh, groups. Um, if you're going to use uh, VirtualBox, add VBox users into that listing as well. You can add as many of them as you want. Press enter for home spatry, press enter for bin bash, uh, no expiration date, so just press enter. And then, of course, press enter again to create the user. Okay, you may want to put in the user's full name. So we'll type in spatry, that is my full name. Uh, room number, work phone, home phone, other, you know, uh, then we need to put in a password, obviously, if you want to log in. So, and of course, I put in a week, Three, one, one, one is a password. Ha 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 ha. But hey, it's virtual box, right? Okay. And so you re-enter that password. It's complete. So then now we'll press, we'll type in exit and then we'll log in as Spatry and then we'll type in our one, one, one password. Ha <laughs> ha And then the next thing we're going to do is start X. Some observations that I'd like to make before I even go into uh, what I've got here is, if you're looking for a distribution that has a graphical package manager, this is not the one for you. In order to get the most out of Slackware, you're going to have to read some documentation online, and they have a good deal of it. Now, the thing is, with this installation, the reason I ins did the full install is this way, if I decide to later on install some applications, I'm actually going to be compiling them, and the, the the development packages that you can get for this contains most things that you're going to need for compiling packages. Okay, and uh, now there are Slack builds that are available online, much like package builds that are for the AUR or Arch user repository, which will allow you to easily install packages. But the thing is with Slackware, Pretty much, if you want to install a package, not only are you going to install that package, but you also have to make sure that you get the dependencies for those packages as well. Otherwise, they're not going to work for you. So with all of that in mind, you're definitely going to need to make good use of the documentation, and I do have a link for that in the show notes. Okay, but 
in its own right, by installing everything, you have a complete OS here. You can pretty much do most anything uh, that you want to get done on this thing. So let's have a quick look and see what you get. Now, upon launching and starting X, obviously XFCE did not look as you see it presented right here. In actuality, I uh, used a default setup. And then I changed the background and themed it a little bit because I really didn't care for uh, the way that the default XFCE appears. And uh, you'll see here that I actually applied the oxygen theme to this, which gives it a nice modern look. And um, of course, down here at the bottom, you have another dock that gives you quick access to a number of things that you'll want to do, such as uh, access your folders, you know, uh, find applications, use your web browser, use your file manager, uh, the terminal, and then, of course, collapse all windows and show the desktop. Okay, and you get in settings. You have your XFCE settings manager, but because you also have KDE installed, you can adjust KDE system settings. And uh, this is, you know, in the settings manager, I basically told it to use oxygen. And then in the KDE system settings, I defined how the oxygen theme was going to look. And that's how I got this appearance here. So everything that you need for configuring this is all right here. In accessories, the mother load is included with this. And I can't, uh, I, I doubt I'd even have time to go over everything that this has with it, but you get uh, all the KDE applications. And of course, you get a number of applications for XFCE2 and some uh, GNOME uh, applications I saw that were being installed in this as well. In development, anything that you're going to need for compiling those packages, because that's most likely what you're going to be doing. So let's say if I wanted to get the whisker menu on this thing. Well, I uh, did a search for uh, some slack builds for the whisker menu, and I couldn't find anything like that. So I knew that if I wanted to get this, I would have to compile it. That's not the scope of today's show, though. Uh, you get a number of education tools in this as well to give your kids an edge in school. Maybe even brush up on your own math skills, hey? You get the mother load of games here, and uh, let me tell you, there's an awful lot of them. So uh, probably, you know, some of them are pretty good, and some of them, well, you know how some Linux games are. <laughs> They're kind of weird. But you get a bunch of them in there. And then, of course, a plethora of tools for graphics. You get the GIMP. And for those of you who really don't want to hit the GIMP learning curve, well, Krita is included here, and this is the KDE image uh, editing tool. And that one's really nice and probably easier for some of you uh, to to be able to digest, especially if you're coming over from, like, Windows into a Linux desktop, although I would not recommend this for uh, beginners. I recommend you spend a little bit of time with, uh, with uh, some of the uh, other... Ubuntu-based distributions, some of the beginner distros, get accustomed to using the, the the terminal, get used to that command line, and get used to compiling some packages before tackling a distro such as this. Okay, uh, in Internet, again, a bunch of tools, a little bit of something for everyone in here from your BitTorrent clients. You have several different web browsers to choose from. You have uh, you have a different email choices. You have XChat IRC for getting help online. Uh, so all in all, very good stuff indeed. Everything you need for playing multimedia, your Amarok, Audacious, the Dragon Player, K3B for making uh, your discs. Uh, you get uh, media players. And of course, you get the MM XMMS Multimedia Center. So if you wanted to use Slackware as a multimedia center, you definitely could do that with this distribution. And all in just a little over seven gigs, you get all this software. How cool is that? Okay, everything you need for uh, making your documents and uh, office, uh, yeah, all, all your office uh, tasks can be done here. This uses Caligra as its office suite. You also have an address book, an organizer, a thesaurus, a time tracker, and a bunch of other applications on here. Even Aquilar for. Uh, uh, for uh, reading text uh, off the screen to you. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this has got Vi improved. I'm still married to Nano. One of these days I really need to uh, learn Vi because they tell me that it's a lot more powerful. 
Okay, and then a number of system tool tools here. Uh, so you can back up your system. Uh, you get uh, you get Dolphin. So let's say you don't like Thunar. Uh, let's make a side-by-side -side comparison here. Here's Dolphin. And then, of course, uh, then we have uh, Thunar. And, of course, Thunar loads a lot faster. There it is. Yeah, you can see I clicked... Uh, <laughs> I clicked launch uh, to launch Dolphin, and then uh, and but Thunar came up a lot quicker. So you have a need for speed. Maybe uh, the Thunar is a better choice. But the thing is, you know, uh, Dolphin is really highly customizable and configurable. As a matter of fact, when I was running Arch Linux, I used to use Dolphin because uh, because of the little sliders here. You know, I used to use Dolphin as my photo manager, so, you know, because it would generate thumbnails and everything, and I could zoom in the size of them and, you know, go through my entire picture collection this way. So, you know, um, that was always an added plus. Um, but all in all, I like what I see here. But as stated, this would be a little bit complicated for the newcomer. So be sure to check out the Slockware documentation. It has all the instructions you need on installing new packages, gives you some tips on compiling packages for this, and of course you can get information on using Slack builds, which are uh, community-driven uh, applications or uh, scripts that will allow you to install applications and that sort of thing. Well, that's all I have on this. Please support the show hosts you love the most by disabling your ad blockers. Peace out. Mm -hmm.